This is the story of how I transformed this into this. When I first moved in, my living room became a dumping ground for pretty much everything that I owned. The living room is just a little rectangle right next to the kitchen and is only 6 square meters wide or 65 square feet. It does have these large windows that was the thing that had me soul on this place. Sure, maybe my neighbors could see right into my apartment but that's a sacrifice that I was willing to make for the sake of my plants. If you watched my previous video, then you know that I'm moving into this apartment from a teeny tiny studio apartment that didn't have a living room. This means that I have no existing furniture, which essentially means that I'm starting with a blank canvas. Well, kind of. First, I'll have to clear out the space. One thing that really bugged me was that there was no separation between the kitchen and the living room. Because they were right next to each other, it felt like my kitchen was literally in my living room. And to solve this, I'm using this wooden slat divider to create a sense of separation. You might think that this is the last thing that I should add to a small space, but having this separation based on function actually helps when square footage is limited. Is this correct? And since you can still see through the divider, it doesn't make the space feel any smaller. In fact, it adds warmth and gives a more built-in look to the fridge and microwave. The use of wood also lends into a few styles that I've been into lately. In particular, these styles often feature natural materials like wood and concrete. They also include more sculptural elements and organic shapes. I wasn't a fan of gray in the past, but since it's hard to incorporate actual concrete into a rental, I decided to go with a gray couch inspired by the color of concrete. I also decided to go with a slimmer silhouette, so arms and legs that aren't too bulky to maintain that sense of airiness in the space. Having space underneath also comes in handy for hiding cables or storage boxes if you'd like. In my case, I also discovered this gap in between and decided it would come in handy to store my stationery. In the spirit of leaning into darker woods, I decided to go with this coffee table. I particularly liked that it was curved around the sides and didn't have boring old straight legs. The curves kind of played into the whole organic shape thing that I was going for. Next, based on the unpacked boxes that I had lying all around the house, I knew that I had to opt for more storage instead of a TV console. And so I went for a storage bench, which ended up being perfect since we don't watch that much TV anyway. Moving on, while I chose the larger furniture pieces based on function, being completely honest, everything else was pretty much dictated by my plants. I accumulated a lot of plants over COVID and I just can't bear to just throw them away. So my goal was to display plants in a way that isn't overwhelming. I was inspired by one plant influencer in particular, Benji Plant. I liked how each cube isn't overstuffed, which allows the plants to be truly showcased. So I'm attempting to do a mini version with this little cube unit. I decided to stain it to add more dark wood and to better match the bench and coffee table that I had. As I was staining, I started to realize that things looked really red, which might not be super obvious on camera, but in person, something definitely felt a little bit off. So I decided to restain it to add a little bit more yellow. I do think it's okay to mix different shades of wood, but they should have a similar undertone for a more cohesive look. And I'm pretty happy about how things turned out. Another thing that really bothered me from the beginning were these AC cords and tubing. For some reason in Korea, they don't bother trying to cover these things up. To cover the gray cord, I simply wrapped some contact paper around it. 
The tubing on the other hand was a bit of a challenge since it protruded quite a bit from the wall and was in such an awkward spot. It was already the same color as the wall, but it still stuck out like a sore thumb. So I decided to roll with it and make it look even more obvious. To make things look intentional, I wrapped the tube in twine to mimic a branch. And then using these shell thingies, I'm making some hanging decor to go with it. Next, I decided to add a couple of floating shelves on both walls. I found these hooks that supposedly don't damage the walls. I decided to put these shelves here to draw attention upwards to create an illusion of taller ceilings and more space. As for this shelf, I honestly just needed more space for my plants. Otherwise, I might have gone with a large statement art piece instead. After test styling this shelf, I realized that the shelf was a little bit too high up. This brought more attention to the AC unit, and overall, things just felt a little bit off balance. I ended up moving the shelf a little bit lower, and this was all because I didn't take into account the height of the items that will go on the shelf. You want to make sure to not make the same mistake that I did and think about the size of your items before putting up your shelves. Thankfully, the other shelf didn't need any adjustments after styling. And now with the shelves all styled, it's time to add a rug because no living room is complete without it. It just adds so much warmth, texture, and coziness. Here, I'm just adding a couple more finishing touches. And with that, the makeover is complete. I'm really happy with how things turned out. Despite being a rental, it's starting to feel more and more like home. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe because this is just the first episode of a whole series where I transform my entire apartment. In the meantime, if you're looking for more inspiration, especially if you live in a tiny space, be sure to check out my previous studio apartment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.